uh, if you want a heading for today, it's energy profile diagrams. Okay, so energy profile diagrams, something we probably haven't, haven't explored in the past. Um, cool. All right, so if we look at collision theory that we're going to talk about in greater detail towards the end of Unit 3, um, what are our two things that are required for a reaction to occur? You don't need a catalyst for every reaction. Change in energy. Change in energy. Did you look at this in year 10? Maybe? No? Okay. So the two, the two requirements is sufficient energy, right, and correct orientation. So in order for particles to react, they need to align themselves in a particular manner, and they need sufficient enough energy in order to overcome or to break the bonds for the uh, bonds to then reform. And that sufficient energy we call the activation energy of the reaction or that which is required to activate, right? To initiate the reaction. Okay. Da, 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 da. Right, and it's given the symbol E with a subscript A. Right, so a bit of collision theory, but we'll talk about that in greater detail. Right, so enough energy in order to break the bonds. So we've got two main, I'll move my camera, eh? two main ways of representing energy. The, the, it's not really a graph, okay? So there's not really a horizontal axis as such, even though it's often represented with a horizontal axis. And it's called the reaction progress, if we want. And sometimes it's labelled as time, but it's not really time. We just, it's, it's a representation, right? It's a diagram more so than it is a graph. So arbitrarily, we're going to have some value, the H or the enthalpy of the reactants, the energy of the reactants, right? And then at some other level will be the energy of the product. Okay, so when we look at the, the first example here, if I get, the, get my laser pointer, yeah. yeah, so EA, right, is the activation energy. So E just means energy, yeah, um, H is enthalpy, delta H is change in energy, E with a subscript A is the activation energy of the reaction. So it's the energy required to break the bonds. And at this location here, we often have what's called an intermediate chemical species. We don't really look at that in year 12, right? So we don't. Uh, there's only one example where we look at intermediate species. And I'll talk about that when we get to that in unit four, right? And then often intermediate species are unstable, right? Because they're partial bonds and stuff. And then new bonds form. And we get the energy of our product. So the difference here, we notice that delta H is positive, therefore that is a what? Okay. Endothermic. Awesome. And if we notice that the delta H decreases is negative, we have an exothermic reaction. Yes? Total energy of where? Yes. Okay, I'll fix that up. Dun, 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 dun. It should say products, you're right. Okay, so I can fix it on here. I'll need to re-upload, um, re-download and re-upload the actual PowerPoint. Okay, so HP is products. Don't have to worry about HP and HR, really. Okay. Here we go. Distance between HR and the top of the activation hump shows the amount of energy required. Which type of reaction shown below has the higher activation energy? One on the left or the one on the right? The right has a higher activation energy, right? Which is typical of endothermic reaction. Have a look here. 2016 exam. We've got a energy profile diagram. Enthalpy of the forward reaction. Yeah, so the forward reaction is as displayed. 
We'll talk about backwards reactions more so when we get to equilibrium. Okay, so the enthalpy of the forward reaction in kilojoules per mole is what? Uh -huh. How'd you work that out? Yes, yeah, so products minus reactants. So products is at 70, minus 150 gives us negative 80 kilojoules per mole. Right. 89% students got that right. Right, 7 got a negative 170, right? And that would be this difference. And then, obviously, there's the others wrong. Okay, let's have a look here. Short answer question. All right, so have a quick sketch. So we've got this reaction. Decomposition of ammonia is represented according to the following. 2NH3 goes to give N2 plus 2H2. So this is an equilibrium arrow. Again, we'll talk about that towards the end of Unit 3. It's part of area study 2. Um, activation energy for the uncatalyzed reaction is 335 kilojoules per mole. I'll talk about the effect of catalyst later. The activation energy, uh, so ignore the second part. On the grid below, draw a labelled energy profile diagram for the uncatalyzed reaction. Go. So delta H is positive 92. Activation energy for uncatalyzed is 335. And let's pause that. So, as we notice, the catalyzed reaction takes less activation energy. But what effect does the catalyst have on delta H? None. Exactly right. Yeah? So delta H only affects the activation energy. It does not affect delta H. If it affected delta H, it would be part of the chemical reaction. And what's the definition of a catalyst? Right. So it is not involved in the, well, it's involved in some sense in the chemical reaction, but it, right, it's not used up or it doesn't react to the reactants in the reaction. So instead, what it's doing, uh, so activation energy must always be positive, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, I'll talk about that later. Come back here. Well, let's skip ahead. I wanted to talk about catalysts. Oh, I should put in a slide about catalysts. I haven't talked about that yet. Oh, it's because I talk about it when we talk about rates of reaction. Okay? Um, so I'll come back. So... What a catalyst does yeah, is it changes the reaction pathway. So think about, if we think about dating for a moment, right? It's, it was Valentine's Day a couple of days ago. Let's think about dating. How do you meet people? You go towards them. You go towards them, all right? So in all of Melbourne, how do you meet people? You just wander the streets, put out your hand to random people and say, hey, how you doing? I'm Mr. Waldron. That'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? Yeah? So what do you do? So have a guess as to how I met my current partner. Close. Yeah? Maybe I'm handsome. But how did she meet me? She ordered me online, right? It wasn't Tinder, it's plenty of fish. But same, same, right? Used an online platform to meet. Does the online platform have anything to do with our relationship? No. It's a catalyst for meeting people. Yeah? It's a tool. And there's plenty of tools on there. Yeah. Nothing? Okay. Do I just have to stop trying with my jokes? Um, right, so Tinder, etc., is a catalyst for meeting romantic partners. Yeah? Or you can go to the pub and meet someone there. So think about catalyst is the surface to which reactants can meet. And we'll talk a lot more about catalyst later, particularly enzymes. 
Our activation energy must always be positive. Why? Because we need to absorb energy in order to break the box. When there's a large activation energy, what can you what can that be told about the strength of the bonds in the reactants? Right, it's strong. Yeah. So large activation energy means the collision need to be incredibly energetic. So what's interesting is the difference in energy between diamond and graphite that's in your pencils is about six kilojoules per mole. Not much at all. But the activation energy between diamond and graphite is enormous, right? Because we need incredible heat and pressure in order to convert graphite into diamond, which we can do. For the low, low sum of $140,000, you can turn your loved one's ashes into a diamond. They're called cremation diamonds. So you can walk around and say, I got this. This is my grandmother. They're like, did you get it from your grandmother? You're like, no, this is my grandmother. So there we go. Room temperature, the reaction of nitrogen oxygen produces nitrogen monoxide, occurs very slowly. If we increase the temperature, what do we know about rate of reaction? Increasing temperature increases the rate of reaction, right? So again, we'll talk about this in greater detail when we get to rates of reaction. No. Yeah? Uh, and, and the reverse is true. If we cool a reaction down, we slow the rate of reaction. But again, we'll talk about rate of reaction later. So we notice this reaction, right? white phosphorus, what do you notice about the activation energy in comparison? Oh, it's hardly anything. Right? Really large, Hardly anything. And this is. I'll pause there. We can exosomic reaction. If we consider ionization energy, right, we're providing energy into the system in order to strip away an electron. So ionization energy is an endothermic process. Changes of state. Endothermic. Right? Exothermic when we're cooling something. So when we're going from gas to liquid to solid, that's exothermic. When we're going from solid to liquid to gas, endothermic. It's absorbing energy in order to break the bonds between the particles. So, quick recap. So, exothermic, I want to think, exit, so it feels hot. The energy is being going from the system to the surroundings. Endothermic, think enter, right? It feels cold because... It takes energy from the surroundings to the system. Okay, how are we doing for time? I might pause there.